Hello and welcome to this session with together with John Tunstall and myself. I'm Leah Zalens and I'm the founder and director of Z Axis Leadership Consultancy in Sydney, Australia. And John is a professional engineer with extensive commercial background and highly experienced in the use of the mental toughness model and framework and that has been developed uh, by uh, Peter Clough and or Dr. Peter or Professor Peter Clough and Doug Strakarczyk over some three decades now. And today in the next 15 minutes or so, we're going to explore John's experience and expertise with a local emergency services group where he's been utilizing the mental toughness model and uh, explore just um, what problem are we, are, are, we, are we trying to solve and, and what has been the process and some of the uh, outcomes to date. So welcome, John, and thank you for joining us today. Pleasure, absolute pleasure. So would you like to, um, yes, just give us a little uh, summary of the uh, emergency uh, services group you're working with, the, the context and, and perhaps how you've come to work with them. What problem have you been asked to help them with? The, this is one of the local, um, we've, we've developed into counties here in the UK and this is one of the local emergency services within uh, my local county here. And what happened was through a contact, a contact that I have within that emergency service, uh, he was head of learning and development within the local emergency services. And we got chatting about the mental toughness concept and it immediately struck a chord with him. And the reason was because what's happened is here in the UK over a period of several years, there has been a lot of austerity measures there they've they've moved on a bit in the last 12 months or so but there have been a lot of austerity measures so the emergency services were being squeezed in terms of the resources that they had and what they were having to do with those resources the issue that that was providing was that the attrition rates, the, the absenteeism, the people leaving the service was increasing substantially. And uh, the, the belief was that this was, it was basically down to stress and just too much demand on people's time. So what we had to do was to draw together to try and first of all, prove the system to see whether the system worked. And from there, there it was intended, it's intended to go on to a rollout to a far larger project. And so, so when you say this, sorry, John, to interrupt you, when you say this to prove the system worked, which system are you referring to? Very specifically, the mindset part of it, because the, the largest cause of absenteeism, the largest cause of the attrition in this particular service was deemed to be stress okay. and stress related issues. And so what was happening was you had smaller emergency services related, but in adjoining uh, counties who were having, we were having to locally, we were having to send over uh from the local force to other forces because their attrition rates were high as well and they didn't have the resources to be able to cope with it themselves so so it was getting to a to a really like a compelling event wasn't it if you're going to call it that they had to do something yeah and the national bodies as well were also involved with this because they were seeing the stress the, the well-being the mental health issues as becoming an increasing problem for um for the emergency services and so something needed to be done so through these discussions we decided to set up um a pilot project and that was the that mm -hmm. was the stage that we got to so the problem we in a nutshell the problem we were trying to solve was the increase in workload was creating an increase in stress and the that increase in stress was leading to an enhanced or increases in absenteeism and attrition. So it was it wasn't cost effective. They were they were paying a lot of people for no for no resource 
and uh, mm. so that, that was essentially in a nutshell the, the problem to be solved. And so share with us then how the mental toughness uh, uh, framework and, and system were utilised. What we did was we selected some, there were, there were people, there were issues at both ends of the scale. You had some people who were deemed to be mentally tough and but but were really coping with things in a slightly different way because they were becoming what would be the word for it they were becoming very um, demanding they were they were going like bulls in china shop and then not knowing what they were doing and so they were really being dominant type personalities there were other people at the other end of the scale who were being subject to things like bullying often by the people at this end of the scale and so the problems were coming at it from both sides. So what we needed to do, what, what, I, what we were asked to do, was to try and have a look at both ends of the scale and see what impact we could do in terms of, what impact we could have in terms of applying a mental toughness process to both ends. The reason that we came, that we came across the mental toughness aspect was because they had looked at other different types of interventions but these interventions hadn't had the results that they were looking for so this was a new concept and so let, let's have a pilot project and see how we go with it so how did you use it this sounds fascinating and a, and a really important um you know thing to to explore right what we did was we took some people at one end of the scale perceived to be at one end of the scale and some people at the other end of the scale, or again, perceived to be at the other end of the scale. And we went through the MTQ 48 uh, process as, as it was at that particular stage. We went through the MTQ 48 process and then had feedback sessions with these people to analyze and see what was the impact of what they were doing what they were doing, this was, this was the key part, what their profile said they were doing, and to have a look and see if what, what interventions we could put in to, um, to try and alleviate the situation. Well, may, it might be good to, um, if you could share a little bit about what the, the mental toughness model is, because there, there could be uh, people in our audience that haven't actually had a lot of exposure to the uh, mental toughness model. So would you like to just give us that bird's eye view of what it is and uh, and, and and go from there? It'll have to be a bird's eye view um, because I don't have the 30 years of experience that Professor Clove has. But in, in essence, mental toughness uh, is a personality trait. So the what it there's the eight factor, the four C's and eight factor model. The the four C's are control, commitment, challenge, and confidence, and they break down into different, the eight factors, different subsections. So within control, you've got uh, life control and emotional control. Um, the, the commitment, you've got uh, risk orientation, goal orientation, and achievement orientation, in learning orientation and risk orientation under challenge, and interpersonal confidence and confidence in abilities under uh, confidence. So each of those can be broken down. Now, just as a little aside, what, what I have done myself is as an engineer, I worked those into a process which came up with a, an acronym of which I call ATTITUDE, which is aspiration, translate the vision into tangible goals, take control of the things you can control, identify, so, so we talk, just go through this, aspiration, which is risk orientation, translate the into tangible goals which is goal orientation because this follows a logical path um, take control take charge of the things you can control which is life control identify your uniqueness which is confidence in abilities um, talk to people which is interpersonal confidence understand the lessons which is learning orientation deliver on your promises which is um, achievement orientation and exercise calm which is emotional control and that follows through as a exercise, exercise calm. I'm going to put that up on my board. That, that's brilliant, John. Okay. Um, that's, a, that's a lovely extension to show just how practical this model is. Yeah. That it is all about what's going on up here, but it translates 
mm. into like how we're operating in our world, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So that, that's the way that I often remember it because for me as an engineer, it's a natural progression. It's a natural way that life works, the things that you have to, uh, the things that you go through, the issues that you go through. So that is essentially, it covers resilience, positivity. It's got inner orientation and outer, um, outer orientation. So it's, it's a complete model because the important part is, uh, I think one of the phrases that uh, Doug has used, it's a precursor to and an explanation of most behavior. And that to me is a critical part of the explanation because one of the things, if I just take a step back to when I, very, when my, I first met my sales mentor from the commercial side, he said to me a lesson that I that I've retained till this day. He said, there's two things you need to know. You need to know where you are and you need to know why you are where you are. Well, to me, mental toughness, because it analyzes how we think rather than looking at how we act, it looks at how we think. Mm. Then that's how we can identify why we are where we are. And that's why it, uh, it rings a bell with me. We can, it's easy to identify, especially in my commercial background, it's very easy to identify where we are. You just look at the board, at the numbers. That's where we are. Right. Why and the we... numbers don't lie, do they? No, they don't. <laughs> they don't. So now we under need to understand why we are where we are. And that's because of the how we're thinking element. That's, uh, that's why. I hope that gives a, yeah. a, a bit of an overview. An oh, definitely. It'll be... Uh, part of the video to play back again because it's it's a very rich uh, explanation that uh, extends the uh, original model beautifully, John. Mm, so okay. tell us tell us how your how your um, emergency services team went. Right. What happened was we it was really interesting because the the person who was at the um, assertive end, shall we call it that person needed to be hauled back, okay? Mm -hmm. The person who was at the sensitive end, the two that I've, I've, I've kept a couple as, as examples, and the one at the sensitive end, that person needed bringing out of themselves. So the, 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 the approach to, to each area was different. And it was that that convinced the executive team that were running this, that this was the solution that they were very very impressed with and needed so to i'm hearing i'm so i'm hearing two things then firstly the observations we were seeing in terms of the two ends of of the spectrum people who look like they might be more in the mentally sensitive end as mm -hmm. opposed to the mentally tough end if we're looking at that scale from zero to ten that the mental toughness scores um cover then um then what I'm hearing then is that the individuals concerned did actually that the, the their assessment scores did reflect their behaviours, and so you were confirming what was going on, like from externally to internally, and then you were then able to say, okay, what does this individual need, yeah. as opposed to one size fits all, which is often the approach with a lot of uh, consultants and psychometric testing and putting everybody all in uh, in one barrel or we're just focusing on behaviors or um, you know so I, I think this is um, certainly um, a great um, place to look at then what did you then do to start the intervention process or decide what interventions were required it was a case of, um, as I mentioned, hauling one back and developing the other one. So in the feedback processes, we started looking, the, the one with the, um, with the sensitivity, they had two areas. First of all, their interpersonal confidence wasn't uh, particularly high. And the other part was the emotional control wasn't particularly yeah. hard. And, and did, were those individuals on board with this? With, with, how did they respond to their scores? Well, the, the, one of the things that I, I took in, in just preparing some notes for this was I took a couple of um, feedback comments that I got 
At the sensitive end, I suppose the most telling feedback common war, comment that I had, because this was a very, uh, very highly qualified, very capable person. I, she, uh, it was a PhD uh, lady. And what her quote to me was, was for, and I, I wrote it down here, for all the psychometric tests I've ever done, this is the first one I've come out of with a clear action plan. And that was a, that was her quote. Um, so what I was able to do also was take a step back while they implemented the action plan. And it's because of that implementation that we're now talking about a rollout at a much higher level, much larger level. Okay. But can I also acknowledge your role in that, John, with um, A, clearly you are very focused and very tuned in to what your client needed, and you're also very systematic. And so you were able to, your whole approach would have been very logical, and therefore it, it helped them to see and, and to create a process. And that also would have aligned very well with somebody who has um, you know, a, a, a strong academic background because they would have appreciated the thoroughness and also the data and then the so what of the data, the what next with the data. Mm. So, so it's not just about what I'm saying, it, the test, is, the, the mental toughness model is great, but it's, it's only as great as the, um, the experience and the application. You know, it's a bit like being a surgeon, you know, it's like you, you've got to know how to use the tool and how to work with the client. And it sounds like you did a great job. Well, what, what happens is uh, that in terms of the MTQ tests, you're absolutely right in terms of saying it's been, it's like being a doctor. Um, when you go into the doctor, you say, I've got a pain in, when I, in my arm. Well, how does that pain manifest itself? Does it hurt when you do this or does it hurt when you do this? And that's exactly the same thing. What the test does is, uh, is it looks at the profile and it highlights areas for, for exploration because there's a, there's a typical prof, there's, you've, you've got the, the overall mental toughness score, and then most of, the, most of the mental toughness individual scores for each of the factors will be somewhere related to that overall score. However, there can be instances where there's an outlier so it could be either at the height, if their score's somewhere in the middle, for example, it could be at the at one end or it could be at the other end. And mm. what happened with the, the sensitive person that, that I'm referring to is they had a couple of outliers, the outliers I mentioned into interpersonal confidence and emotional control. So those were the areas to focus in on and start to explore. Mm. What we did was we explored why that, uh, why those existed and what were the things behind the existence of those particular outliers. And from mm. we were able to identify some things that had happened previously, some at work, some outside work, and start to look at that and see how how we could then address that and, and move move the situation forward with exercises and as as mentioned, a clear action plan. Mm. Now, John, I'm just conscious of the time here. We haven't discussed the people at the other end of the spectrum, mm. but do you have um, some feedback from, from those individuals as well? Absolutely. The, 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 the most common comment, because these people were at the extreme mental toughness end, uh, the, the most common comment I got is, I've had several aha moments and what was meant by that was I was doing this and I didn't even realize I was doing it. So, uh, so their behavior was able to be modified by them being far more conscious of the things that they were doing, which were having an impact on the people around them. Mm. And uh, whereas before they were sort of ramming their way through a room, leaving bodies all over the place, turning around and saying, did I do that? Now they were coming to a situation of saying, well, let's see how we're going to move across this room. Uh, do you mind if I step on your shoulder? Can you excuse me a little bit? So they became much more aware of the, of the, assert the, the impact that their assertiveness was having on those around them, especially the people at the more sensitive end. 
Mm. So it sounds like the aha, the insights um, for both groups uh, were well received and this is now expanding into the, the whole uh, department now. The intention now is we're talking at the most senior level within this organisation uh, with a view to rolling that out uh, locally. Uh, but the, also, the other impact is that it, the, these emergency services, certainly the way the structure's gone in this country, uh, in the UK, is that they're now becoming related to other ones in the local area. So once it's implemented in one, we should be able to move that off and talk to the next one and the next one and the next one. Exactly. And, and, it's, and it sounds like you've got some, um, you know, some really um, enthusiastic participants that are going to encourage, you know, the, their colleagues to participate as well because they've had something useful from it. But what I have within the organisation is an advocate. Yeah, that, that's the word I was looking for. Fantastic. <laughs> Okay. Well, it sounds like you've got a couple more advocates with the, from the participants in because mm. I know for myself, when, when the client who's actually uh, taken the assessment gets value and, and it gets that insight that is meaningful to them, that's the most important part because that gives them that experience and the transformation process can begin. If they don't have an aha, if they don't see value in that information in that report or the conversation with the coach or the consultant, then it's very hard then to get the referral or the expansion further because they haven't had a valuable experience from it. Mm. So clearly the way you've approached it, the way you designed it, the way you've worked with the tool, um, you know, I think um, you've really given us a bird's eye view of um, how to uh, utilize a, a, a tool like this and uh, the value of starting with a, a small group within the bigger uh, group and also to look for those most likely like the the, the people at the um, more extreme ends mm -hmm. in terms of how we're perceiving their behavior so um, I think a great strategy and um, and I look forward to uh, hearing the um, the uh, results as they start to emerge as you uh, take this to the to the larger organization and beyond mm -hmm. yeah, um, are there any other insights or words you'd like to leave us with before well, we um, close off today I think that um, the the, the key thing that's come out of this particular exercise is that it's something that most people go about their daily life without even thinking of how they're thinking. And so they, things happen. It's a question of, somebody had this saying, some people make things happen, some things watch things happen, and some people wonder what happened. And I think that for most people, it's, uh, it's about realizing and becoming aware that of how they're thinking. And once they understand that it, we can control, it's one of the few things, it's perhaps the only freedom we have is what we think. And so once we can control what we think, we can decide what we want to do and remove the obstacles, remove the barriers to, to doing it. And take responsibility for ourselves about mm. what it is about how I'm thinking, how I'm being, how I'm behaving, that, um, you know, that, that, that it, it, it will be better for myself and others if I change it, even if it's a little bit. And mm. I think that's one of the, um, the high value outcomes I'm hearing that you've, you've been able to achieve um, by running this pilot with the two um, extreme, let's call them the extreme groups, and um, you know, to to show the value relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. So well done, John. Thank okay. you. Thank you for that.